Uh, so it's uh, our treasurer, Bernie Dulon's not here. We're going to go ahead and have a bill do the financials. How you doing, guys? Um, basically, uh, Bernie's going to talk about the, the financials as well as student athlete. So I'm going to cover that for him. Uh, basically, we had for registrations 588,000 team sponsorships this year, 82,000 cheer events. We do have the number, but I didn't put it on this uh, on this slide. Uh, we gave out 29,000 on scholarships, uh, operational costs, uh, league insurances went up a little bit, uh, 49,000. Referees, that, that number is as of right now is 106,000. And playoffs is the balance of last year's costs because they get carried over from last year as well as what we uh, started for this year. Equipment costs, we spent 60,000 on new helmets and reconditioning, uh, 7,500 on new shoulder pads, and 161,000 between jerseys, pants, and cheering uniforms. So that's what we've spent so far uh, year to day. Um, hopefully we'll have a good playoffs on the income side. Hopefully we have we have another one because uh, of the quarterfinals uh, on the Super Bowl side are actually at the stadiums. So hopefully that will increase our number. Uh, cheers to an athlete. Uh, the program is doing really well. We're going to have all these are the, these are the winners from this year. The boys have been uh, selected as well. Um, but they won't be posted until about a week and a half before the Super Bowls. So that we'll tell all the parents, we'll post it on the website. Then the parents will bring their kids, hopefully, to the Super Bowls, and we'll acknowledge them in front of everybody for their age group at halftime. So that's, gonna be, that's a good program. As well as we're going to have a, uh, a bank, the Apple Bank, uh, for all the winners. We've been talking to a couple of guest speakers. That will be on November 18th. Again, to highlight student athlete, because in reality, that's what really matters. Football and cheers is the fun stuff. School really does matter. So, other than that, that's all I have until one slide. So, yep. okay. Most of you guys know I'm Phil Blake. I'm the 2017 president. Uh, I've been in the office for 19 years. So I've spent a lot of time here. I played in it for seven years. So, pretty much half my life has been part. Been in the office. Here's a list of the board of directors, the current board of directors. Obviously, we have some uh, positions coming up later on tonight. Hopefully, some of you guys here I heard are going to run for it, so it should be a great, great thing for us. My president's report. First, I want to recognize a couple people. Uh, some of the ones I want to say thank you to you are the office staff. Obviously, they have a pretty difficult job uh, trying to one, make sure we have everything we need every week to be prepared for you know games, stuff like that with not only coaches, but parents, stuff like that. I don't think they get a, enough recognition for what they do. So Bill and your staff, I appreciate everything you guys do, and I'm sure all these guys that are here also appreciate it too. Um, commissioners, for those of you guys that did commissioning, uh, we appreciate what you guys do. We know you spend you know, five, six, eight hours out there on the field on Saturday to make sure they're prepared. Um, like I said, I know what you guys do goes unnoticed, but uh, believe me, the board definitely appreciates all the hard work you guys do, the endless hours making sure those fields are prepared for the games to start, uh, making sure our sidelines are as safe as possible, and stuff like that. So thank you guys a deal of all to your time. Uh, coaches, uh, we don't have a whole lot here tonight, but the ones that are here are the ones that care. So um, like I said, I appreciate what you guys do. Um, obviously, we wouldn't have a league without some solid coaches. So you know, the, the, the top ech echelon of uh, coaches, I feel, are the ones that care the most are the ones that are here for now. So thank you guys. And then finally, all volunteers, um, if there's team moms that are here, team dads, uh, cheer coaches, um, any parents that you know, volunteer your time to help your team out. Uh, once again, we appreciate what you guys do. And uh, you know, everyone's here for those kids, and that's the most important thing. So thank you, guys. Uh, football cheer. Obviously, spring tackle decreased a little bit, but that has to do with the spring seven on seven, which was a large increase. Um, it was a new to the, to the league this year, and I think it went really, really well, especially the ones that did that. We tried to implement it kind of similar to what the high schools do. Um, obviously, there's still some role tweaking that we uh, need to perform to make it more similar to the high schools, but I think for the most part, it went really, really well. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It's something that we see uh, going forward and uh, being a big part of our success, hopefully. Uh, fall, we had a slight decrease um, as far as number-wise, but overall, the season's been great. So um, once again, just thank you guys. Uh, League Events Coaches Clinic, I want to thank Adam Cherry for another great coaches clinic. Um, he spent a lot of time getting guest speakers and setting up all the individual rooms and preparing us. So thanks, Adam. I'm sure you'll talk about it a little bit when you get up here. 
Um, the Alpha Camp. We went back from our partners with UNM, decided that we were going to take it in our own hands, started the Alpha Camp back up again. Um, it wasn't as successful as we were hoping, but I think it's just going to build off that. We actually have more numbers than I think initially that we thought. Uh, but uh, it's one of those things that uh, I think we're in a step in the right direction, and we can definitely see it building more and more. And um, it's nice to have our own coaches involved with that again, and teaching these guys and taking the grasp of it. Uh, one of the things that was a big disappointment to me this year is the seven on seven tournament. I don't know if you guys know, but we usually held a seven on seven tournament with the high schools. Uh, this is a year we actually had to cancel it because we only had 12 teams. And for us to make money, we need about 16. Um, that's pretty much what I say, make money, make a couple hundred bucks. But um, it's a great tournament. And so hopefully, you know, with your guys' support, we're going to push it again next year, try to get anybody that has any ties with these high schools to try to get uh, back on board with it. Um, it's just a great stepping stone for us to meet the high school coaches and uh, try to bridge that gap a little bit more for one weekend. So um, that's one of the things that hopefully going forward that we still uh, try to push and try to get back on, on track. Uh, the Hobbs League um, is associated with us. I don't know how many of you guys know that, um, but it was actually growing this year. They ended up uh, picking up Tatum, correct? Yes, yeah, so they picked up Tatum, and then in the future, Bill will talk about it. We have a couple other leagues that are trying to join on to, uh, to Apple, so it should be a good thing. And then obviously, uh, Bill talked about uh, the Student Athlete Award, Coach of the Year Award, stuff like that. Um, he'll go in that a little bit more in depth in his report, but those are a couple things. Um, League needs. Obviously, you guys know that uh, one of our biggest league needs is in helmets. Um, you know, we spend a lot of money conditioning helmets, and trying to buy new helmets every year. Ideally, we'd love each kid to have a helmet that's two, three years old, and we have been brainstorming for months trying to figure out a solution to do this. And that's one of our goals, as far as a board and something like that. That hopefully in the near future we can find out a way to uh, get you know every kid a helmet that's only three years old. Um, I think it uh, would help us all out tremendously. And like I said. Uh, when you guys decide to be on the board, you know, that's one of the things hopefully going forward that uh, you guys figure out how to grow and figure out how we can do that. Uh, parent orientation, one of the things we did differently this year is we actually had a parent orientation for all new parents for both spring and fall. I think it was great actually. It was the first time we came up here to answer all the basic questions as far as the Apple, kind of what the parents' responsibilities are, what the coaches' responsibilities are. Um, and hopefully you guys noticed that, especially if you had new kids that showed up to parent orientation where the parents kind of have less questions for you the first couple of weeks um, before you guys start taking over and kind of implementing your own stuff. Um, hopefully that's something, like I said, that we try to build on in the future, uh, have a more important parent orientations, maybe a, a broader one where we invite parents that, you know, everybody in the league has to come at least watch it. Or we talk about put, posting it on YouTube, do a YouTube video and have them check it off that they've seen it. Uh, we know a lot of leagues throughout the nation, that's what they do. And um, I think it's a great thing. So that's one of the one of the things that uh, we look forward to uh, building on. Also, uh, volunteers. You know, obviously this is a volunteer league. All you guys volunteer all a lot of your time. Um, I'm a coach in the league too. So you know, scouting and watching video, preparing for fall week. I mean, it's pretty much having two full time jobs. So you know, I want to thank all you guys for what you guys do as well as volunteers. But I mean, you guys know it. With a league like this, and the league of our size, we always need more volunteers. Uh, people are going to make that step to become a board member. Um, it's easy to go out there on a weekend and complain to a commissioner or compa co complain to a board member. Uh, but we need solid guys like the guys that are in this room that are actually want to step up and actually make a difference and do something to change this league. So, uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to see how many of you guys actually run for the board. I think we should have a, a pretty good show in here. So, I uh, appreciate what you guys do, and uh, that's really about it. Nicole? My name is Nicole Brody and I'm the president of, for the cheer side of Yapple and I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to kind of um, update you on, on how our year went. Um, we, before I start, um, there's two individuals in particular that really um, back me up and make sure that things get done that need to get done. Um, 
and that is uh, Raynette and Marlene. Those two um, that work in the office really are the kind of um, hands and feet of cheer and making sure that things are getting done and making sure that um, all of our events are ready to go and so I really appreciate all of the work that they do. Um, and then behind them, behind the scenes, um, Bill, I just wanted to say thank you for always having my back. Um, I always have crazy ideas and I want things the way I want them to be and sometimes I can be a little stubborn um, but he always has my back and makes sure that we get things done um, and so when I said I, I don't want to ever have cheer fest at the Kiva ever again it's horrible um, he thought I was crazy but he helped me make that vision come true so that we didn't ever have to go back to the Kiva so far um, so I appreciate that um, our volunteer, all of our coaches are volunteers. Most of our coaches are just moms who want to see their daughters be able to participate in the program. And so they step up and they have very little uh, cheer experience. And so we have to give lots of um, training and lots of instruction for our coaches. And I really appreciate them stepping up to, to the job and position of being a coach. Um, and our cheer council, so we have a, um, leadership board, so to speak, on the cheer side of coaches who um, decide to step up and help do the training, help mentor new coaches, and so I really appreciate having the cheer council as well. Um, we have three big competitions throughout the year. In spring, we have our Spring Fest, and then in fall, we have Spirit Fest and Cheer Fest. Both our Spring Fest and Spirit Fest are kind of our fun showcase events where the girls get to go out and, girls and boys get to go out and um, just kind of show what they have, have a good time, and enjoy um, using their skills. And our Cheer Fest competition is the competition that is a little bit more cutthroat. It gets a little bit more um, competitive. Coaches work a little bit harder for that competition. Um, and it, that's our biggest kind of event of the year. Um, we just had that, um, for those of you who have cheer, cheerleaders, um, know we just had that uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was really a good event for us. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about is kind of a new venture for Yackle. Um, we are starting a, we started, I should say, an all-star all -star cheer program. All-star cheer is a very competitive, advanced skill program um, for cheerleaders who are in our Yackle program who want to advance their skills, who want to be doing more tumbling, more advanced stunting. We limit the ages that are allowed to participate in this program, 8 to 14 if they're in the 8th grade. Um, and we actually are having tryouts this week for our next um, team for New Mexico Fierce All-Stars. This program is in its third year, its second year as New Mexico Fierce. Um, it's, it is a little bit pricier than our regular recreational program, um, and it's a lot more intense as far as uh, training goes, um, but it's definitely something if you know of young ladies who are interested in getting that all-star experience and increasing their skills, getting more tumbling skills and being prepared for the next level of cheerleading, this is a great opportunity for them to get involved in uh, an organization and a program that's going to really um, meet them at their level and kind of grow with them. Um, so that's kind of all I have on the cheer side. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, I think I know pretty much everybody in the room. Um, but before I even start, I want to say, um, for a league that has 2,000 young men, uh, 600 young ladies, and so forth, and we have how many here? About 25, the truly dedicated ones. So from me to you, I want to say thank you. Because it makes a difference, because nothing happens without the board. Everyone you know, looks at Yaffle and they say, who runs the, runs the board? Who runs Yaffle? The board does. The board itself is the most powerful entity in YAP. Uh, it's a really big deal. So for me to you to be here for tonight, whether you're running or whether you're just here to vote, is a big deal. So I want to say thanks. Because that shows dedication and wanting to put back into this league. So, um, all right, before, part of my main function is actually trying to help keep costs down for the league. Uh, with the help of our sponsors listed here, uh, you know, XL Sports Photography, that's Kim Ju, Anthony uh, Griego. Um, Embroid me, uh, Dave and Busters, you know, Dick Sporting Goods does a lot of sponsoring, TLC, and so forth. Uh, these individuals help us keep our fees down uh, so we can keep it more affordable for our kids. Uh, anytime we can do that, that's a plus. So I always like to make sure that I highlight our big ones here. We have others, but these are our main sponsors here, so 
Uh, if you know these folks, if you, you know, looking for shoes, go to Dick's. I mean, I'm not a commercial, but it does matter. It really does. Um, okay, how did we do this year? Uh, Phil talked about it. Our, our registration were down a little bit for the fall and for the spring on the tackle side, uh, both the number of teams as well as in the spring and in the fall. Uh, but we didn't do bad. We're talking maybe a you know, 100 and some odd uh, kid differential on the fall and 100 and some odd differential on the spring. Uh, seven on seven, though, on the other hand, is up tremendously. Uh, so that, that did really, really well, especially in the spring. We were hoping for about 350 to 400, but I'll take the 250 because there's only 100 last year. Uh, so that's a good number. Uh, fall teams and spring teams, almost about the same. It's only in the fall, spring, greatly improved. On the cheer side, almost the same as last year. I think we're off by maybe 40, 40 cheerleaders or somewhere thereabouts. But we also have our all-star cheer as well. So that promotes our program, so that's a good thing. So cheer is doing well too. So we're hanging in there. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're trending, we stopped the trend down. Everyone knew from 2008, 2009, we came down along with the rest of the country, and now we kind of stabilized where we're at. Um, what, are, what are the goals and expectations for, for 2018? Uh, registration, how do you folks think registration went? Relatively smooth, not a lot of issues. Hopefully that will continue. We have a couple of new perks coming in as well. Uh, customer service. Uh, Phil said it at multiple board meetings. Uh, Phil and I see every board, every email that goes through Yahoo, basically. And you know, complaints and things of that nature are down dramatically, and I mean dramatically. And I want to say thank you to my staff because a lot of it is them. A lot of it is them being on point, answering calls, uh, answering emails, they're addressing it in a timely manner, and making sure that everyone feels heard. We can't always say yes, but we can make you feel heard. So I want to say thanks to you guys for, for making that happen. Uh, highlight. Uh, in the Yaffa community. Yaffa is probably the best kept secret in the state. People come here and they, even though we know we're the number one football league in the state, youth football league in the state, no one really knows this. So that's going to be my main focus next year, to really get us out into the community and to make people aware of who we are and what we do. Uh, improved communication. Uh, right now we communicate through our blast system. Everyone gets the blast, yes? Good. Uh, we're going to work on getting our tech system up. We have a text system that hopefully will be up and running by the end of the year. We'll do some tests. So when we come to the next year, they'll be up and running. Uh, Streamline sp uh, spring and fall equipment issue. We changed the workflow. Uh, one of our board members last year said we need to change it to make it more streamlined uh, so the parents can see. And I think it really, really made a huge difference. You guys remember we used to give out equipment on the east side of the building, right? And now we do it on the west side. The kids go a straight shot. I think it went really, really well. Um, less complaints and everything else. But what was really cool is it put a lot of the, of, of the, uh, uh, the responsibility on us coaches. Because I coach as well. I help give out equipment as well. It put it on us to make sure our kids are taken care of. And because I see a lot of faces here in the room who helped out. And none of that would have been possible without you guys sitting in this room. Because I see a lot of you right here. So again, thanks a bunch because it always seems like it's the same guys helping out. And, but you know what? If you guys don't help, it doesn't get done. But that system really worked and it would not have happened without you. So thanks again. Um, leader for Heads Up. Uh, USA Football, a little challenging this year? Yes? It was kind of crazy, right? Uh, I think they've got their bugs worked out. It took them almost a whole year. Uh, so hopefully next year will be better. We still want to make sure that, we're on the, that we are the place in New Mexico for heads of trade. Uh, we want our kids to be safe, we want our coaches to talk correctly. If nothing else, the Tackle One certification and the research, what does it do? It helps us be better managers of our team, right? So that's always a plus. So that's something we're, we're going to continue. Uh, Phil alluded to this earlier. Our Hobbs is definitely one of our associates. They've grown this year, so the numbers have improved. Uh, currently, they're interleaving with, with uh, Tatum. <laughs> And I'm currently in talks for 2018 for Amarillo. It's a select league that they're actually going to send some teams to our tournament this year. Uh, so Jim kind of threw down the gauntlet uh, to one of their coaches, stating that uh, if you want to play good ball, come play us and we'll see. And I think they're going to run, run into the bus, so I'll call Mr. Jim. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Greatly, a greatly expand our participation in the desert tournament. Notice I changed that name. It used to be High Desert. Championships, right? Now it's High Desert State. How many of you guys remember we used to be called the State Tournament? Yes? Okay. We're going to go back to that. 
We're hoping that by going back to that, we'll actually have more people want to participate. So, with that in mind, we're going to kind of assume the sale, right? Assume the sale. So you're going to get a call and an email from Lawrence or Jim, probably in the next couple of days, I think it's before Thursday, asking the guys who are sitting in one or two seats, right, in both Lazia and Lobo, what their thoughts are on participating in the tournament. Because Jim and Lawrence and Renette are in contact with Tucson, Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Amarillo, and El Paso. And we're telling them we're getting the best of our best. So hopefully, I'm, I'm assuming the sale, and hopefully get some of you folks to participate. Because last year, we had a lot of people from out of state, but hardly any of our guys, right? And I know we play good ball. So I want to see if we can highlight that good football and bring some teams in and participate. So, and this year, we're actually giving rings. How many folks get rings in uh, baseball when you go to tournament? Yes? Rings are happening this year. Uh, we should have those in hand by the 17th of this month. Um, kids seem to love it. I don't get it, but kids seem to love it. So, so we'll see what happens. Um, other than that, that's all I have. And uh, again, I want to say thanks for you guys in the room. Thanks for helping out with the equipment issue. Thanks for being here for the kids. microphone before for a meeting, so we'll stick with that for, uh, for tonight. Uh, so my name is Adam Cherry. I was the Coaches Council President for this past year. Um, came into it kind of knowing exactly what happened behind the scenes. It's a great learning experience uh, moving forward. So you see there that we have 90 teams. Um, you know, they're playing ball tackle football. If you just put four coaches on each staff, I mean, we're going to raise somewhere there between 350 to 500 coaches that are participating with our youth at any given time. Um, so the same thing that we run into here this evening are similar things that we run into as coaches as well. Uh, it is the biggest part of our volunteer network within YAP, are the guys and the girls that are giving their time to be out there with the kids. And it's, it's a large undertaking, uh, but it's something that, that I think most of us really value. Uh, it's something here that uh, we enjoy doing something that we don't get paid anything for more than we enjoy things that we do, do get paid for, right? So uh, from me to all the coaches that are out there, I mean, it's still, I know it's a big job. Um, I'm very fortunate with our team to have a lot of support. We have you know, a great cheer program and great team moms and, and great volunteers. Um, and I know that it's tough uh, throughout the districts in Yappa, uh, that people are running into challenges all the time. And I've got to talk to guys as the year goes on about the challenges that they're running into and trying to work a way forward for us and our biggest volunteer network. So it's always a big thank you. Whenever we, we got into it this year, said, okay, we're going to start treating everybody as not a grudging volunteer, right? We are going to ask everybody just to um, act like adults, right? Moving on forward and just really appreciate kind of the volunteer role that we have as coaches within the league. Uh, we get a ton of support. You know, I know Bill, Bill, like everybody said, has a great, uh, great support for everybody involved. We certainly thank him for all the things that he, he does for us. Um, you know, so whenever we were getting into it this year, we had a few things that changed. The coaches ended up having to provide a player uh, safety coach for their team. So each team had to be represented. Uh, so this was going to an additional training that outside of just the online training that USA Football provides. Uh, we had a really good um, attendance rate for that training this year. You know, so my hat's off to all the guys that took their time out of their day on Saturday and went and spent four hours um, going over material for our PSC side. Um, it's a big deal to the league. All right, so it's not only a big deal as far as making sure that we're coaching the right way, but a big deal um, financially for the league as well. So it's something that we're all working towards uh, helping out. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, through my work uh, to be associated with Joe O'Neill, who is the president of ESPN Radio. Um, if you've never run across Joe, he's a super guy. Joe helped me out this year, um, provide, I think, just a really good guest speaker for our coaches tonight. Uh, so former NFL player Mark Schlereth was our keynote speaker at our coaches clinic this year. 
Uh, his message was on point. Uh, I just thought it was it was great for us uh, to be able to go take pictures afterwards with him. I was fortunate enough to be able to visit with him and take him to the hotel the night before. Um, and he really, for our lead, uh, being able to come in, you know, and doing it for a fee that really is underneath what he typically gets, uh, was great. So that was in conjunction with Joe, and he also brought Bob Brown on. I thought he did a great job in seeing the event. Um, we had a number of coaches that helped us out this year. So Rio Rancho, love them or hate them, they brought four of their assistant coaches, and their head coach was there all day watching these guys, to come speak to our coaches about X's and O's of football. Um, coach Adcox from Manzano was there. Um, coach Johnson from Mount Pretty High was there. We had, throughout the course of the year, during our uh, coaches' meetings, uh, Coach Lopez, who's now Volcano Vista. Uh, we had um, Rico from the Playboy that came on out. So we, we ended up having coaches that came and assisted us trying to get some of the X's and O's. Um, we also provided a spring clinic to coaches that were just starting up, trying to get everybody off on the right foot. Uh, we know as a head coach that the majority of the job is management as much as it is about the X's and O's. Uh, so just trying to get everybody a good footing on what it takes to run a team um, and try to get more of those people into the league. So we know it's a huge volunteer network. We always need more volunteers. And I know a lot of you guys that are here are on staffs as assistants. You know, and I would encourage you to spread your wings, uh, especially if you've had good experience there. You know, help us out volunteering as head coach because uh, we need more guys that are actually coming to the meetings to step up and take care of this. Um, Hosting the monthly meetings for the coaches was kind of a big deal. We ended up kind of working with posting some of those videos online um, as well, trying to see what the take rate was as far as instead of having everybody come in one room, seeing if we can start to do things more digitally uh, moving forward. So there were some things that we tinkered with. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. You know, so we'll see moving forward exactly how we, how we end up uh, running with that. You know, as my job, I really thought it was just important just to get the information out to the coaches as far as um, how the league is taking care of us and the things that we need uh, moving forward. So, I think it was a good year. You know, I appreciate all the support that we received. Um, some of the ideas that have come down. You know, Antonio Manning, if you guys don't know, he really took the all-star program under his wing um, and ran with it. So without guys like that moving forward, looking for other things that we can do within the league, a lot of those things won't happen. So, again, thanks to all the coaches and uh, see what happens moving forward. It's my job. I get to introduce Ray Caldwell. So Ray got to take over the CSC position here um, about halfway through the year or so. Yeah. It's a heavy undertaking. We'd also like to thank Heinrich Nava for putting in all the work that he did early on as well. Ray? Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, Ray Caldwell, um, CSC chair. Um, as Coach Sherry said, Heinrich Nava was the uh, CSC chair prior to. Uh, we're kind of taking it over in the middle of the season. Um, I'd like to I'd like to thank Adam. I'll be honest with you, man. I, I really felt like the things that he brought were a value add all year, and uh, I, I I personally appreciate it as a coach and my coaching staff did. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there before we get started. Um, I'm going to keep it short this week, guys. I'll be honest with you. The the coach selection council. What we do is we we're actually interview and select all the head coaches. Um, it's a grueling process. Um, two guys I'd like to recognize that are in the room that were a part of it is Jaime Nava and uh, Tony uh, Leos. They both spent probably 15 to 20 hours a week for about six weeks straight. Um, we were scheduled interview after interview after interview, um, meetings for incumbent coaches, interviews for new head coaches, um, just, just a ton of time. Um, but I'll tell you what, the reason that I'm willing to put that time in is because I feel like it's it's the most critical um, job within the athlete because we're assigning the men that are going to shape the youth that uh, we're working with every day. Um, so it, I think it's very, very important. And I would challenge any of you guys, please, if you're interested in being a part of it, Please come out and help us out. I mean, we need as much help as possible. Um, there's, like I said, an interview process. There's uh, touch bases throughout the year with years with coaches. 
um, different complaints, as Bill said, different things that come through that we need to take a look at. That takes man hours, that takes tons of time. So any of you guys that are interested and passionate about the people that we're putting in front of these children, please uh, you know, don't hesitate to contact Bill or Chad or Bill and, and uh, help us out because we need as much help as possible. This is one of those things that we can't just kind of let slide and go. We've got to make sure that we're involved in that process. That's really all I have. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, a couple things. Uh, background system will open January 2nd. Uh, incumbent deadline for uh, incumbent coaches is January 15th. So make sure you have all your applications in before that date. Uh, as Ray Say, my name is Chad Whitaker. Um, President elect, I'll be the president in 2018. Um, I want to say thank you to all the commissioners. I think we had uh, more commissioners this year. You guys know we try to break it down in shifts where you're only there a couple hours after, before your games. We try to work with your schedules, but uh, it, was, it was great having you all out there. Some things I'm going to go over is league challenges, uh, 2000 expectation, and 2018 goals. I said thank you to all 2017 commissioners. Uh, if you're a commissioner, stand up. Even if you helped out, spring, fall, you guys deserve a big clap in the hand. I know it's tough out there all day, and you're getting uh, yelled at or screamed at. Um, some of our general duties, if you're interested in being commissioner next year, uh, provide safe environment for all involved, knowledgeable and league rules, procedures, leash context um, per emergency procedures we provide courteous service uh, be positive and professional at all times and we are going to need more volunteers for 2018 we expect to be growing <coughs> challenges 2018 challenges increased public awareness about Yapful um, I don't know if any of you guys have Facebook or your wife has Facebook this year we uh, somehow got Rusty the sports clown involved, he, he does a little Facebook thing and he interviews some teams and he does some uh, good uh, publicity and we need publicity and uh, he actually interviewed Phil and his team and then they put it on Facebook, it was the most watched show they've had and then they went out to Cheerfest with Nicole and they interviewed some people and uh, just walked around and got a bunch of good shots and that will be out this Thursday. Yeah, so it'll be out on Thursday on Facebook. Uh, game official development training. One of the biggest things, guys. We're working on it. As you've seen, we are short officials a couple of the last two weeks. Uh, we listen to you guys, and we are working on it. We will have the problem fixed by next year. Uh, coaches education, CCP meetings, like Adam said. He didn't hammer you guys. We're all grown men. He wanted you to come out enjoy the content he had and uh, go from there. Uh, parents coaches training videos. If you go online there's stuff on there for parents, um, for you new coaches or even us old coaches. There's always something new out there. Uh, 2018, 2018 expectations. Board ethics continue and improve. Last year we put in a board ethics committee. We have not had to use it yet. Um, that's to police ourselves. Um, accountability with each volunteer, that means us coaches, um, commissioners, uh, and the paid ones, the officials. Customer service, this is one of the best years for customer service. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, the office staff. The uh, complaints were minimal this year, very minimal. And follow up on valid complaints immediately. Ray usually fires back within five, six hours. Adam's the same way. Phil usually on there too. In 
2018 goals. Increase the number of football players for spring and fall. Increase the number of cheerleaders for spring and fall. Make a make seven on seven high school tournament bigger and better. Like one of the things disappointing is, as Phil said, we couldn't have it this year because we only got 12 teams. Increase the participation in the NFL combine. Increase spring and fall seven on seven football teams. Increase train and improve all game officials. And that we're, we're really strong on that and increase the number of league volunteers. I know it's hard being a coach and a family and all that good stuff, but we need more um, volunteers. Keep updating helmets and shoulder pads like Bill said, and Bill said we continue to do that. Um, and we're trying, like last year, what was it, 600? 600 new helmets last year. We, we already have some coming this year. Uh, the board, last board meeting, is discussing and we sent it back to, to the competition committee going back to the A and B B with the current playoff format. So you're just being the A side and the B side, you don't cross over. There's a couple different um, proposals we sent to competition com committee to uh, see what they find out. If any of you want to be on a competition committee, uh, contact Mario Martinez because we need more of you coaches on there. Chad, can you explain a little bit what the, co the competition committee does? Just so everybody understands what Yeah, the competition, like, uh, what was it, three years ago? Um, they came up, they listened to some coaches saying they wanted a different aspect or a different part of the league. So we went back to kind of the old style of mix and matching on your seating. The competition committee, it usually just um, goes through the competition. They, um, I can't really say, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, they do the playoff bracket. You guys got me flustered. Sorry, that's <laughs> So now, now, now you really owe me, Brady. <laughs> but they, they do, they go through all the competition, any changes and things like that. Also, there's a rules committee. Guys, if you were interested in being part of a rules committee, that's uh, Justin Wett will get a hold of him. History matters, guys. History matters. This thing's been around 51 years now. Why is it important? We are here to vote for leadership. Leadership comes from you guys. All you guys, coaches agreed to be led by the board and represented by a council president currently, Adam Cherry our league assets and the volunteer coaches board. Our true assets are all of your guys' children, all of our children. Come on, Bill. This is some of the uh, past President's history, Larry Yuma, Mike Abbott, Frank Sedia. I'm not going to go through all of it. You guys can see their names up there. Um, some of these guys were great. Like I see uh, Phil up there was one of the, in my opinion, one of the best presidents we've had in a long time. What does it take to be a board member? Six seats are up tonight, guys. Three positions are a three-year commitment. One position is a two-year commitment and two positions are a one-year commitment. Why does someone want to be a board member or a committee member or a commissioner? Volunteers in Yaffa, we make a difference. We give back to the community, improve the league, leave a legacy for your guys' children, be a part of something bigger, help those less fortunate than ourselves. <coughs> The most valuable gift you give the most valuable gift you have your time guys all of you guys put in a lot of time board members must be dedicated and willing to act as a steward to protect of the assets of the league including our children be focused on the league's purpose get more kids playing and cheering set policies for the league to follow meet to deal with issues that regularly Require policy decisions to improve the league and be loyal to the league. That's a big one, guys. 
be willing to work outside of coaching. The rewards are endless for our community. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, voting process, four nominations. So you guys will nominate, then the candidates will come up for two minutes and give a speech, vote, and the results will be announced. Uh, just to go over your kind of clarification how the voting process works, like Chad said, there's six positions that are opened. Um, whoever, however many are nominated or voted on, the top three vote getters will get the three year spots. The fourth one will get that, what was it, one year? Two year. Two year. Yeah, the fourth one will get the two year, and the two, you know, out of the six will get the, the one year ones. So just kind of give you guys some insight on how that works. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open up for nominations if anybody has any nominations. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? I nominate Chad Whitaker. Some of you guys know I'm Phil Plake. I was a uh, 2017 president, so hopefully I get another chance to uh, follow through with this stuff. So um, that's it for me. All right, Justin, you want to go ahead and come up? Uh, my name is Justin Kimbrough. I coach the Quaver Rookies. Uh, I was raised here in Albuquerque. I started playing the Alpha when I was in third grade. Played all the way through high school or until I got to high school. Um, so I've you know, been in the Apple program. I see the impact that you know, these coaches can have on 
the youth in their lives. Uh, one of the names that was on there a little while ago was Mike Abbott. He was my Yapa coach throughout the whole time. Um, and to this day, you know, I can still see, see him around and see some of the impact that he had on my life. Um, and that's what I'm here to do, just here for the youth. Um, there's two things I'm passionate about in life the most, which is the youth and then football. So, you know, I'm going to come heaven every day when I get to go to football practice for the youth. Um, and I'd like to be on the board. You know, I don't have, a, I don't have my own agendas or my own missions here for, you know, being on the board. I'm strictly here for the kids, and I want to see, you know, this league grow and, and uh, do what's best for, for the youth of Albuquerque. That's all I got. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Uh, I know most of you guys in here, all the guys that are all rookie and TV coaches. My name is Mike Storms, uh, help rate coach, Los Angeles rookies, head coach of the spring team this year. Uh, I just want to be part of the board so that I can be part of the solutions. I think I have a lot of uh, good ideas to contribute, you know, as far as equipment, fundraising. I've been a part of all kinds of different sports leagues. Played Yaffle from the time I was eight until I was 14, and then into high school. Uh, that's pretty much it. I think I have a lot to contribute as far as, you know, time and effort, and that's what I'll do. Hi, my name is uh, Coach E.D. or Ellis Allen. I'm dad. Um, I've been living in Albuquerque for about 12 years. I've been coaching the league for um, about 10 years here. Coached um, in all the divisions already. Got, took a couple teams up. Um, actually, like two years ago, was my first kid to graduate high school. Was the kids I started coaching when we were like freshmen. Coached a couple different leagues. Um, never played football here. In Texas and Minnesota. Uh, I'd like to be part of the board just to help out. Uh, I guess give some of my thoughts, my ideas, and, and um, I guess it'd be like a learning experience for me because I've never been part of anything like that before. Uh, 
also like be said, passionate about this stuff, about football. I want to see youth grow up with good role models and something I've lacked when I was a kid, so it's really important to me. So I'll give you a vote and you'll kill the night with me. So thank you. Sean. Come by and collect them, and then we'll get them counted. 